I don't know if you ever remembered first day of school. Yeah. For me, I was so excited for the first day of school as a kindergartner that I dressed in my clothes the night before. <laughs> Just so I could pop out of my bed and poof, here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready to go and and, and experience this, yeah, uh, right. you know, this new adventure. Yeah. And what's happened to that little kid? What's happened to that passion? What's happened to that, you know, that dream? When's the last time you've allowed yourself to dream, to find that purpose, to find that passion? And so, and, and there's so many people out there that are telling you, you got to know your why, you got to know your dream, you got to know your purpose, but they don't teach how to do it. Yeah. And we've discovered how um, to help you find that dream. We call it dream weaving. Here is singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent, and your host. It's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. Hey, 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 it's a beautiful day to go out west indeed. We're going out west again. We're doing a lot of that lately, but this is a treat. Uh, this gentleman, he's a world-class transformational speaker, is my guest today, best-selling author and mindset expert. He believes in a three-step process for success. One, know what you want. Two, finish what you start. And three, celebrate the process. A construction accident left this man paralyzed from the waist down in between college football seasons over 20 years ago. His life and dreams were shattered, but not defeated. He's picked up the pieces and has since discovered the steps of success that great leaders follow and finish. So we're taking a ride out today to Salt Lake City from the Music City to hang out with the man who is teaching people how to do it all. His name is Jeff Griffin. Great to see you here and thank you so much for uh, being on Podcasting Your Global Career. Thank you for having me, James. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is awesome. So I don't know where to start. I mean, you, uh, I, I checked out your uh, video and uh, the accolades that have poured in for people who have been so inspired by you and all that you've done. Uh, it's really touching. It's really, um, you know, it makes us uh, mere humans think, what's making this guy tick? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I always say that it's 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 easy to look good on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. And and that's what I do is I just I just make sure I connect myself with the with the giants with those people who are doing things who are making a difference, who are uh, leaving an impact a positive impact on this world, and and I hope when I die that my friends and family remember me as a man who lightened their loads, lifted their spirits, and loved them. Beautiful. And so hopefully after this time that we have with each other, perhaps I've lightened your load, I lifted your spirit, or or people know that I that I love them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your career um, in sports, which is just fabulous? Um, the NBA, and also you went to Greece. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about that story, the Greece story. You know, I, I love it. You know, I was, I believe that there is a, that there is a gold medalist in all of us or an Olympian in all of us. You know, I was able to participate in the 2004 Athens, Greece Paralympic games. And I remember them telling us one time before we left, like, you know, we, we have a, we have a ring for every one of you athletes because not everyone is going to get a medal. Right. You're not going to get a gold or a silver or a bronze. There's only three people that get uh, a medal. And, but we have a ring for everyone who is an Olympic athlete so that they can remember that they were able to participate in these games. And, and I really believe that there is an Olympic leader in, in, in all of us. So what is it that we are doing wrong that we can't seem to discover it? Most of us. I mean, you, mu you must people see people look, walking around looking like why are you not enjoying the blessings you have oh absolutely and, yeah. and and let me just let me just address the elephant in the room james um about how good looking i am 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm totally joking, man. Okay. People are going to see this, right? They're going to be listening. They're no, going to be no, hearing we it. Got visuals. We got everything. Maybe, maybe know, they'll you know. see that if, yeah. if if you can agree or disagree. You can right. comment. You can do whatever right. you want to. I don't care. Just to let everybody know, Jeff did come into this room in a wheelchair. So that's that's the mystery here. Yes. Right? You know, the absolutely. Surprise. And yeah. so I go and speak all over the world and I address the elephant in the room uh, besides being good looking, but being in a wheelchair. And... Um, and what I've discovered with with my challenge, you know, I was I, I was a collegiate athlete before I went to Athens. I was a collegiate athlete. I was a football player in college. We can get to that later if we want to. But I was a collegiate athlete. In between seasons, I was up forty feet on some scaffolding and I broke my back. Ooh. Came down and landed on my feet, straight legged, stuck the landing perfect, and it changed my life. Put me in a wheelchair. The doctors gave me a life sentence to never stand, never move, or never walk again. And my whole identity was wrapped up in my physicality. It was all wrapped up in being able to catch a ball, being able to run a route with crispness. It was all wrapped up in that. When that was taken away, I'm like, okay, now what? Yeah. Now what? And I, and I was able to just sift through the broken pieces of my uh, shattered back and, and broken dreams. And I, and I realized some things. Some, I discovered some flecks of gold. And going back to addressing the elephant on stage, you know, I was given a life sentence of being in a wheelchair. But I've learned over these years that most of us, if not all of us, are paralyzed from the demons of doubt, fear, and complacency. Yes. And so that's what keeps us from being that world record leader that is inside of us. That's what keeps us from being that Olympic leader that's inside of us, it are those demons of doubt, fear, and complacency. and um, Which has very little to do with the physical. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. It's all inside. And, and, and so, you know, when I was... When I was getting ready to go to college to play there, you know, I was told that, hey, Griff, you know, it's 80-20, 80% mental, 20% physical. Others were like, no, 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 Griff, it's it's 80% physical, 20% mental. And when I got there, I realized that they were both wrong. It's 100% mental. Everything that we do is 100% mental. The way we practice, the way we prepare, the way we play is 100% mental. And some of the heaviest lifting we'll have to do is in between our ears. And most of us don't know where to begin. No, most of us don't know where to start. And most of us have been, you know, directed down the wrong path. And so it's it's really getting these individuals um, who want first desire to be a leader, right? Desire to lead, desire to inspire, desire to, you know, transform lives. Um, then give them the steps that will lead them. Um, down that road of success, you know, being a successful leader and a leader of success are two different things. And, and I believe we've discovered those steps to help people get up out of their chairs and walk forward, walk forward and move forward. And so the answer to your question, you know, it, it, uh, it requires me to do a, a ton of stuff physically compared to other people, but I still go and do it because I realize that it's, it's that first step that's the most important. And then it's the next step. And then it's the next step. And then it's the next step. Yeah. And and so if people can just get over that hurdle um, of believing that they're a leader, and then two, that they have the tools and skills to be the leader, and then celebrate the process once they once they decide to 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 go down that uh, that path. You must do coaching. I do a little bit of coaching. Yeah, because you have it all over you that you you know, you probably influence people's paradigm shift that needs to happen for them to do what you just described. And they, they don't even know what they don't know. That's the hard part. <laughs> that is the hard part. In fact, I was, I was uh, speaking, you know, I, my, my main gig is speaking on stage, okay. is being able to inspire in a short amount of time and not just motivate. People talk, call me a motivational speaker. I like to think of myself as a transformational speaker where we transform lives, where we, where we get them to actually believe that they can chase down their dreams, so they can conduct the song that sings in their, their, their soul, that they can, you know, do these things that they've, that they've forgotten about. And, and, and so I was, I was asked to come speak to a bank, uh, First Republic Bank in California. They brought in a, their, their other people. They had 60 relationship managers there. And I shared these three Ds, these three gold nuggets um, with their group that is at the foundation of every problem, I believe. But I've also learned too that the problem isn't the problem. 
because we all have problems. But their problem was they needed to bring in 400 million new dollars that they have never done before. They had never brought in that much money um, as new investors. So these relationship managers are like, we've never done this before. And so their leader is like, okay, how do I get them to do something they've never done before? How do I get them to believe that it's possible? And so I had the opportunity to go there and share the three Ds, these three gold nuggets. And um, after we were finished, the, the VP came up to me. He's like, Griff, thank you so much for eliminating our excuses. There's no reason why we can't hit our target. And so 12 months later, I called them back up just to make sure that, uh, you know, to, to see how we did. And, uh, and I'm like, hey, how, how'd you guys do last year? And her assistant was like, Griff, I don't know what um, Shiva told you, but we ended up with $530 million. <laughs> Weren't were you getting like every penny over that you know $400 what? million dollar threshold? <laughs> I, if, I wish I would have known their challenge before I uh, agreed yeah. to my speaking fee. <laughs> but you know, you, you talked about coaching and that's really what it is about coaching is being able to assess what their problem is, what their challenge is, and then giving them a solution that fits their problem. Yeah. It's not, I'm not going to go in there and just give everybody the same solution because everybody's problem is a little bit different. Right. And, and so, you know, it was great. It was great to see them experience that success. And, and fortunately for me, you know, the senior VP was in that audience and asked me to come and share these gold nuggets with her team. So I right. went from a, 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 on stage to now an executive coaching experience where I'm dealing with their 16 executives. Yeah. And, um, and, and we keep getting results after results after results that, uh, you know, they're, they're just increasing their bottom line. So your mission is working. It's just clear as day. It, it is simple. Yeah. Just not right. easy. Right. It's simple, <laughs> just not easy. Tell me about after your injury, um, when did it occur to you that there was a life like you're describing out there waiting for you? Was it mm -hmm. just a, a gradual bur slow burn mm -hmm. or was it just an uh, epiphany one day saying, I have to do this. I have to go out and, and do this. That's a great question. That's a great question. You know, cause I, I mentioned to you before that, you know, as a collegiate athlete whose identity is all wrapped up in his physicality and having that stripped away from you. Right. And your listeners and viewers, I'm sure are going to experience that time where they've built their foundation on a soundy foundation or they've, they've cut corners. Yeah. And, and they're either going to fall or they have fallen and their world that they know it has just been turned upside down and, and they find themselves on their back, similar to myself. Right. I entered that sauna of self-pity as I call it. And I was wallowing in that syrupy, sticky sauna of self-pity. And I was having that pity party and anyone who, who would listen, I would invite in and I'm like, Hey, you guys got to come in here. You got to join me. Um, and it serves no one. Right. It serves no one. But it feels good because I'm lost. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn to. I don't know what the next step is. I can't even walk. How can I take that step? And so I'm. My world is just upside down. Yeah. Um. And when I got to the hospital after they they you know did surgery on my back, they wouldn't feed me in bed anymore. So if I wanted to eat, I had to get out of bed. It took me 30 minutes to get out of bed with the aid of some nurses and get my body brace on and I'm getting in my, in my chair. Everything is difficult. Everything is a challenge. Everything, you know, would require such effort that never did before. Now I'm feeling sorry for myself. I'm having the biggest pity party of, of the day. I'm rolling down the sterile halls of the hospital, just feeling sorry for myself. I get to the cafeteria, I get my food. I don't know if you've ever been around, you know, where you've been hurting so much where you don't want to be around anybody. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's one of the most dangerous places to be in. Yeah, your mind will say anything to you. We distance which... ourselves. We, you know, we just get into that that darkness, that dark, you know, where that dark abyss that, you know, we can't get out unless we have the aid of somebody and some help. And I just want to be left alone. I got my food. I have my, you know, tray and I go to the corner of the cafeteria and I pl place my tray there. And I just want to be left alone. You yeah. know, I'm crying. I'm flavoring my food with my, with my tears. And also this tray plops in front of me and I'm about, I look up and I'm about to tell the person to go take a hike using some language I'm not going to use on this podcast, right. <laughs> you know, with this I'm conversation. Chaplain. I appreciate that. You betcha. Yeah. You know, I, I, was, I was about to use that, you know, <laughs> that, that language and I did it and I'm like, okay. And he looks at me and I look at him and before I could say anything, he asked a question 
that changed my life forever, that helped me exit that sauna of self-pity. And, um, and, you know, you asked how long was, was I in there for? How long did it take me to find my purpose and my mission? Uh, fortunately for me, this, this, and the person that asked me the question, here's the irony. He was a prisoner from the point of the mountain that was doing rehab because he had just, you know, done some, some, he was working out and he had an aneurysm in his head and it paralyzed his right side of his body. And so he was doing therapy at the hospital. And so here is the person that sets me free from my prison is a prisoner Right. At the point of the mountain. Yeah. And he looks at me and I look at him and he asks that question that changed my life forever. And the question that he asked me is, why are you crying, dude? I'm like, what? And he repeats himself. He's like, why are you crying, dude? And I realized in his slurred speech, the question that he was asking me, he's like, why are you crying, dude? Oh, yeah. Why are you crying, dude? Yeah. And that caused me to, to flip the switch and snapped me out of my pity party, helped me exit that son of self-pity. And I turned around and I looked around. And I'm like, why am I crying? I saw a guy in the cafeteria who had a halo screwed to his skull who couldn't even feed himself. He was paralyzed from the neck down. There was another guy next to him who was paralyzed from the neck down, but he had some movement in his arm. So they taped a fork to his finger and his thumb and he was feeding himself. And by the time the morsel got to his mouth, it had all fallen off basically. And he had a yeah. small little bite and he's struggling just to feed himself. I can feed myself. I can hug people. I can transfer. I can do so many things that these men could not do. Right. And that just snapped me out of my, my pity party. And so I, I started to focus on things that I could do, not what I couldn't do. Awesome. And then with that led to, it is the book Impossible. Am I saying it right? It's, it's it, I saw, look, I said, it looks like I impossible. Said, I am, or is it I am? Tell me, tell me what it is, because I'm. So I wrote a I'm, book in 2005. It right. was right after the Olympics. I'm like, how did I get here? Right. How did I? How, how did I become? You know, like one of the youngest trust managers at the at the bank that I worked to right. at before. Oh, so it's I'm possible. I'm possible. Gotcha. So I am so, hyphen possible. Yes, I'm yeah. possible. I am possible with a hyphen because you know this 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 term impossible. Right. I know, yeah. How I many know. times have you heard that? It's impossible. We can't right. do that. It's impossible. Yeah. Maybe not for James, but for me, it's impossible. <laughs> Maybe not for, for Jessica, but for me, it's impossible. Yeah. And so how do we change the impossible into the possible without changing our problems, right? Because we're right. all dealt with the problems. Again, it's not, the problem isn't the problem because we all have problems. And I hope I don't diminish anyone else's problems by sharing my problem or sharing that because I've learned that all pain and all problems hurt. Yeah. No matter the size. Right. But, but we're like, okay, so how do we take the impossible and turn it into the possible without really, you know, changing our environment, changing all these things? Because we're always told, oh, if, if you grew up on their side of the tracks, if you had different, you know, color skin, if you yeah. went to a different school, all these excuses. A million different outs. Right? But you are the solution to impossible. We are the, it's the solutions to impossible. We have all that information. We have all that, all the solutions inside of us. And, and so when we keep on turning outward, then, then we're not going to find the answer that pertains to us. And Tell me the and, best, and, best part of your day. The best part of my day? Yeah. Meeting people like you, talking to people like you. See, I told you I was good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, That's, man. You know yeah. what? But, but honestly, the best part of my day is waking up. Yeah. That I get so to you're live. full of gratitude. Absolutely. Yeah. I am grateful to be in a wheelchair. I am grateful that I'm paralyzed, dissatisfied, but grateful. Right. I'm grateful for the life that I have. I'm grateful for the life that I get to live. I'm grateful for the life that I'm going to create. I'm grateful for the life that I've created. I'm grateful for the opportunity to meet individuals like yourself and to share a few things that I've discovered. I don't have all the answers. Yeah. But the answers I do have, I know that they work. Yeah. Um, where people want to connect with you and learn more about you, where should we go? The best and, and, and fast, fastest way is to go to my website, griffinmotivation.com. Okay. So G-R-I-F-F-I-N. Right. Motivation. So like Griffin, uh, you know, is a mythical beast. It's half lion, half eagle. Okay. Awesome. I like to convince, I, like I try to convince people that I am a mythical beast. <laughs> and then I go home and my wife reminds me that I'm neither a beast nor mythical. And, uh, but, um, 
So if you can, if you go to griffinmotivation.com, there's a contact page. You can go to my LinkedIn, YouTube, um, you know, all the, the social handles there. But uh, that's the quickest and best way to get a hold of me. We'll put all of those, of course, in the show notes for you folks to follow. Um, who's the best audience for you? Like I know being a motivational, I don't want to use motivational, but um, what did you use earlier? Transformational speaker. Transformational speaker. speaker. Where do you find most at home where you have the most value to people, do you think? Which, which kind of audience would you be best serving? So the best, the best audience are, uh, you know, leaders who need a little bit, who, who, who need their people um, to hear what th their message from somebody else, if that makes sense. Yeah. And the biggest impact, I wouldn't say the biggest, but some of the greatest impact that I've had are, is with uh, um, women. Women from the ages of about 35 to 45. Okay. You know, you, a, a lot of these women that I'm working with, they've lost themselves in their family or in their children, their identity. When I say they lost themselves in their identity, in their family. And um, there's other, you know, women that I'm working with that uh, who are, leaders in a corporation or a company that they're doing a great job, but they're, they're getting burned out. Their team is getting burned out and, and people are start, are starting to stop listening to their message because after you hear the same note, the same tune, it doesn't yeah. matter how beautiful it is. Right. You know, you start to tune out. And, and so, but uh, that's where I've had the greatest impact where it was with women 35 to 45 who, who, um, Who needs some support? We were just going through that chat today in the mastermind. Um, that exact subject came up about getting lost in your career, getting lost in all the things you're doing and you're driving yourself and you're working and you're working and you're working and you're working and you could work 24 hours a day. It still wouldn't be enough. Mm -hmm. And you forget that there's somebody inside here that really hasn't uncovered their purpose. Uh, I'm big on that, uncovering your purpose. Not what you do. It's like, why are we here? Mm -hmm. And you seem to have found it. Absolutely. I love that because once you find your, pers your purpose, I call it your passion, your purpose, your destination, your dream. Because one of those three Ds is a dream. Do you know what it is that you want to do? Do you know where you want to go? Yeah. It doesn't matter how to get there. Don't worry about the mechanics. But do you know where you want to go? Do you know your purpose? Do you know your passion? Because what happens is your destination draws you yeah. instead of being pushed. Right. And we get so tired when yeah. we're just dragging, when we're pushing, when we're grinding. I hate that word grind. Yeah. You know, I, I'm like inspired. I want, I, I want to come to work inspired. I want to go and make sales you know, because I'm inspired because I want to help other people. I don't want to grind. It catches up to us. And so that purpose is so huge. You got to know your, your, uh, your purpose. And once you have that passion with that purpose, whoo, I'm telling you, man, yeah. you can do more in six weeks than you can do in six months. Yeah. And, and don't you feel like you, um, what you, once you have those connections, those synapses, whatever it is, that vibrational energy, if you will, it sort of attracts what you want without you doing much. You don't have to do, like you're saying, the grinding, the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Neville Goddard calls it uh, a bridge of incidents mm -hmm. occurs suddenly, magically out of nowhere. But it's really where you are with your thought process yeah. that happens, you know. You're in alignment. Yeah. Yeah. You're in alignment. And once you're in alignment, things just start to fall into place and, and things drop out of your, out of your life and, and you're living with purpose and, and, and what used to seem like a grind, what used to seem like, oh my goodness, a, a drag to wake up. You're like, you know, I don't remember. I don't know if you ever remembered first day of school. Yeah. For me, I was so excited for the first day of school as a kindergartner that I dressed in my clothes the night before. Just so I could pop out of my bed and poof, here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready to go and and, and experience this, yeah, uh, you right. know, this new adventure. Yeah. 
And what's happened to that little kid? What's happened to that passion? What's happened to that, you know, that dream? When's the last time you've allowed yourself to dream, to find that purpose, to find that passion? And so, and, and there's so many people out there that are telling you, you got to know your why, you got to know your dream, you got to know your purpose, but they don't teach how to do it. Yeah. And we've discovered how um, to help you find that dream. We call it dream weaving. Yeah. And uh, as short as 10 minutes, you know, you can find out what that is. A lot of times it takes a lot longer than 10 minutes, but, yeah. you know, it, as short as 10 minutes, you can find out what your dream is with this dream weaving. And, and I'm like, so when's the last time you allowed yourself to open up those floodgates of imagination and to dream new dreams? You know, when's the last time you allowed yourself to, you know, to, to dream in HD? And when's the last time you've taken the time to inhale, to evaluate and look around and then start to weave the tapestry of dreams that's going to hang on somebody else's social media wall. Yeah. Very you know, nice. Create that yeah. dream that everyone else is like, I want that. Yeah. I want what you have. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to drink what he is drinking. Yeah. I want to yeah. eat what he is eating. And yeah. I, I want to just do what that person is doing. And uh, there's so many people that inspire me. And, 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 and so, you know, like I said, I hope that uh, I'm able to lift somebody's loads or lighten their spirit and, or actually lighten their load and lift their spirit and, and know that they're loved. Great. Last words of wisdom to anybody out there, um, especially our, our young audience who's struggling with trying to find their place, trying to find out why are they in this world? What are, they, what are we doing here? Um, anything you could say to them to give them encouragement to not be over-focused, not overthink it, but what could they do pragmatically to propel themselves along to get to where they're supposed to be? Absolutely. Well, the first thing is stop lying to yourself. We live in a world where it's, it's pretend. Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. We show people like a snippet of what life is like. And then we, we were lying to ourselves as well. Like, oh, I'm all that. I'm like, I have it all put together. Stop lying to ourselves. There's three, there's some of the three greatest lies that we tell ourselves. In my opinion, there's three, there's the three biggest lies. And lie number one is I'm not good enough. Joe's good enough. James good enough. Jessica's good enough, but I'm not good enough. That's lie number one, because here, here's the truth. Every single one of you who are listening, who is still here, you have the ability to achieve your dreams and desires. You come from infinite, um, you come from infinite uh, greatness. You know, we have the deity, we have the DNA of deity. Yeah. And so we have the ability to achieve our dreams and desires. And so lie number one, I'm not good enough. Lie number two is I don't have the right tools or skills. Everyone who's watching this on their phone or listening to this on their phone, they have m more access than the president of the United States did back in 1992. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a matter of resources. It's a matter of resourcefulness. It's a matter of flipping the switch and reframing it and starting to see what you can do instead of what you can't do. The tools yeah. and skills are out there. You have the tools. You have the skills. Everyone who's listening or watching, you have the tools and skills. One, you have the ability. Two, you have the tools and skills. And the third greatest lie, I can do this on my own. Yeah. I can do this on my own. That's me. <laughs> I don't yeah. need their help. Right. I can do this myself. Yeah. You know, I've got I've to figure this out myself. You know, I can't ask. We could do a lot on our own. Like you're the loneliest man in town. <laughs> and you can't do as much as you possibly can unless you do it with a team. Yeah. And if it's a two-man team, a three-man team, or whatever it is. Right. Um, and so there's some people like, well, I can't afford this. I can't do this. Anyone who's still here and who's still listening, if you go to my website and go to my contact page and you email me with the subject line possible, I will send you the possibility principle, which is at the footings of these foundations. The three Ds or the three gold nuggets is the foundation, but the footings is called the possibility principle. And the possibility principle, as I mentioned to you earlier, you know, I went and trained with the Navy SEALs and the Navy SEALs like, Griff, it's simple to be a Navy SEAL. It's just not easy. <laughs> yeah. And, and, these, and these, uh, these tools and these skills and these steps that we've discovered, these 10 gold nuggets that we have available for people, they're simple. 
they're just not easy in the and the very very the footings the footings of all this of your foundation of your purpose your passion your dreams all that stuff is the possibility principle and the possibility principle will teach you how to match your desire and your dreams together the possibility the possibility principle will teach you what success is you know we all believe that the opposite of success is failure which is a bunch of crap because i've never met anyone who hasn't failed their way to success yeah and so if you're ever if you're starting this journey please give your, your yourself permission to fail because failures at first are triumphs at last yeah as long as you just don't quit awesome. there's three other things that come along with this possibility principle but companies pay me thousands of dollars to come teach this principle i'm giving it to you for free and it may seem like it's so simple or there might be a catch no go to my go, go to my web page go to the contact page put in the subject line possible I will, me and my team will send you the possibility principle. And if you do that in the next 21 days, your life will change. Awesome. Griff, it was a absolute pleasure. I really, I, we could go for a couple more hours, I'm sure. Yeah. Enjoy this, but uh, time is a ticking. So I just want to wish all of God's blessings on you, your family, and your career moving forward. It was an honor. Oh, my but, goodness pleasure and honor was mine. Thank you. Hey, if you guys like what's going on here, please leave a great review in the Apple Podcasts. I've left a simple review process in the show notes and we'd really appreciate it. And also, don't be shy. Forward this to your best friend because you know they need it. Hey, if you need some coaching, hit up the link in the show notes. It's calendly.com forward slash dharmic. And you can take a little chance with me and I'll get you on your way. That's a wrap for me today. I'm your host, James Kevin O'Connor. So until the next time, when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage. Ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery. If wishes were windows, I'd open one and find That freedom is really a simple state of mind So ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Mystery.